Hey there, welcome back to the cafe. So today we're gonna to be doing another little mark making technique. And for this, I've got a few pieces of muslin and I've just torn them roughly into eight and a half by 11 inch pieces. And then I've snipped the ends of this one lengthwise. And then I went ahead and took a couple, couple more and snipped the ends. Uh, that way too. So just to shake it up a little bit and you'll see what that's all for in a minute. I've got myself a nice beat up workhorse mini ironing board here. I love this thing. I use it all the time. And then I've got this iron that is really for crafting. I iron all my papers with this iron and do all kinds of uh, ironing of fabric for crafting. And then I have a separate iron for clothes. That's kind of funny I never even use it I don't wear clothes that need to be ironed I'm all about cotton I mean look do I look like somebody who wears clothes that need to be ironed oh that's funny this is one of my favorite shirts it's a workhorse too but yeah so I might end up using that iron if this one ever conks out but this one's been such a workhorse I've been using this one iron here for probably 15 years so it's cool to have good reliable stuff okay now that these are ironed we can go ahead and move on to the next step let's go over materials real quick so this is folk art asphaltum is the color and i've got it on my little six by six inch jelly plate Got a couple water brushes here. I've got a round and a flat. Just that. I'm gonna do a little experimenting today. And then I've got a round, uh, this looks like a six, yeah, six, and then a liner brush. And I wanna grab a flat. So lots of times I'll just grab what's handy and I found, I just came up with this flat and a flat angle brush. So we'll get some cool marks out of all that. And then here's our fabric, our little muslin piece of fabric. I've just got it clipped to a piece of canvas board. And then I've got some kitchen paper, just some freezer paper taped to the board just for a little bit of buffer. Once you get to know the nature of your supplies and your materials, it becomes really intuitive because you can calculate the next step. Sometimes it's an educated guess, sometimes it's an intuitive guess, but it's all worth exploring.
This muslin fabric is really great too because it's so easy to paint on. The trick is having your brush wet enough so that it flows like butter. Okay, now I want to mess with some folk art vintage white and I'm going to start off with this angled flat and this number six round. Okay, so now I've got this Anita's all-purpose white acrylic paint. Give it a good shake. Find a clean area. All right, so that one looks cool. I think that one's complete. Let's cruise through this one now. Plus, you know, sometimes I'll really mess stuff up and, you know, it's never a problem for me. I don't care if I go out of the lines or if I make a mistake with a mark and it doesn't match up, I just add more mistakes and make the pattern more random. That's really my solution for that. And it works great because it takes the pressure off. These are pretty cool and fun. I'm digging this. Okay, let's do this one now. don't plan any of this this is all I put my paintbrush down and start moving it and that's how I work and I invite you if you work differently I invite you to try it this way and if you work differently in a way that works for you let me know in the comments because I'm always open to trying new stuff too but uh, I don't generally turn towards reference photos for stuff like this. I just like to get after it. Plus, it's all your own when you paint like this. They're your marks. They're from your freehand paintbrush. 
Sometimes I'm finding too, I have to force myself to change paint brushes because I get really comfortable. I'll get really comfortable with a brush and then I won't want to venture out, but we're venturing in this series. This part right here to me looks like a little Egyptian snake painting. <laughs> And then here's kind of a Celtic little spiral. There's all kinds of cool little stuff on this page. Oh, give yourself the gift of this. It's really a good time. Sometimes I gotta anchor my, thing, my hand. I'm not always great at that. I'm just not practiced at it because I get lazy. Well, I like that. And then my brush faded out and I just really like how that came out. Whoosh. I wanna do a little bit more hair, just the tiniest bit. Really freewheeling it now, no anchor. Okay, good enough. I like flats. I like angled flats a lot because they just conform easier, but I like straight up flats too because they make you work a little harder, but the lines are worth it. I really love it for this right here, this kind of stuff, because you can get inside the color and stay inside the color with a tight flat. I goop up my paint a lot because I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't want to have to keep coming back here all the time, but you gotta, especially if you want bold. I get a lot of variation and I like variation between bold and faded, but I can't have it all looking faded because that's just too lazy. Uh, I love the look of that. It's so primitive to me. It's like, I don't know, battleground shields. Pretty cool. I just like the look of it. I like the language that paint speaks because it speaks loudly and it doesn't need words. Okay, now I've got a bit of an issue. I want to do one more thing with this asphaltum color. So get a little bit more of that out. I'm going to use this number six round. I really like to get a lot of paint and water in my brush, especially when I'm working on fabric. Sometimes I can really <laughs> miss the mark though. You do want to be mindful. It's all right though. Let's go, everyone. It's like exclamation point all across the middle of the page. Damn straight, right? Sometimes you just got to say absolutely. Say it with emotion and conviction. Exclamation. Yeah, glad I added those. I like that look. And I like it left, just the way it is. Okay. Let's do a few dots down here, just a few. Let's go here on the longer ones and then I will pick a direction but I inevitably end up <laughs> in a pattern <laughs> I 
need to go a little more wild, but this is so fun for me. Here, I'll change it up. I can change it up. It just takes effort because you can get locked in so, so easy doing this stuff. Sometimes it's cool though. It comes out cool when you do get locked in at times. You'll find that you end up with some signature marks in your work, which is really fun. That is one thing I do like about getting attracted to a pattern because you do it again and again and you do it in different ways and then it kind of becomes yours because you turn to it and you use it in all these ways and it ends up turning into marks over and over again that have the familiarity of your hand. You know what I'm trying to say. All right, so here we are with these all nice and dry now. And even the backs came out pretty cool too. They, I went ahead and scanned them because this would be a fun blank to do all different kinds of arc making on too. They're nice and faded and smoky looking and I really love that look. So got the finished side and the unfinished side and we created these with just a few brushes really easy stuff here and then this proved to be the way to go with this little canvas board taped off it caught the extra paint it's going to be a nice cool runoff sheet and this gives me the strength to keep that fabric in place really awesome little setup there so you guessed it here's the last step let's hope it goes well for me <laughs> that one went good I do expect them to be a little off plus they're gonna be fraying a bunch I'll have to come in and clean these up but now I have all of these different little chunks of collaging fabric with some really cool mark making on them and I can go ahead and put them together or pull them apart or just use one whatever I want to do I really like this here this is kind of cool too it's different Yeah, muslin frays quite a bit, but it leaves such a beautiful torn edge, and that's what I love about it. Plus, it's a natural fiber, so uh, it tears right along the line, and it's smooth to work on. I just really prefer this kind of fabric to paint on. Look at how cool those are. But, okay, good. I hope that all stays intact. We're gonna find out right now. Yep, most did, some didn't. Still came out really, really cool. So there's our pieces. They just need to be cleaned up a bit. But wow, what a way to get some really awesome uh, collaged fabric, collage mark made fabric for all your projects, journals, uh, collage artwork, canvas artwork, paper artwork, combining these with paper, whatever you want. Sky is the limit with these. So that worked out pretty well like that. Now, of course, you could always do a full sheet and not tear it up. I just thought this would be a fun little idea to see how it came out. There it is. Now these other ones are actually a little longer and I think a little thinner. Let's see how this shakes out here. Pretty good. I love it. That's a really cool piece there. And the great thing about a technique like this is once you get zeroed in on patterns that you love, 
it really becomes easy to uh, replicate those patterns on paper, on different kinds of fabric, whatever. It's just so many directions. It makes my head spin, really, to <laughs> think of all the directions we can take this kind of artwork. Okay, enough chatting. I'm just going to tear now. So here's all these fun little strips for collage and every project you can think of. And then you get a nice little pile of uh, muslin thread from these two because they fray pretty good. So you end up with a nice little pile of thread if you like to use that for your artwork too. And then here's the shorter ones we did. So I really hope you give this a shot. I love this. Look at how fun that one is. Oh my gosh. Love it. This one's cool too. This is like a little Egyptian one. A little snaky one. <laughs> Here's a one that's just a really cool, simple little pattern. Ah, oh, these are great fun. This one's okay. It's not one of my faves, faves. This one's kind of cool too. I'd like to play around more with that idea. These I love. I always love these so very much. They're one of my favorite marks to make, I'm finding. Here's a little bit more variation. Oh, you gotta do this, it's so fun. Okay, hope you liked this. Get to it, you'll be so happy you did, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.